Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Meta Cafe. Grab your cup of coffee or your tea, sit back and relax, and let's chat about the astrology landscape for the coming week and for what is going on for today. I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. It was darn right chilly here in the Pacific Northwest. I was cuddled up in not only my jacket, but blankets and had the heat going. It was crazy. But today is a gorgeous day. It's a great start to the week. And I hope wherever you were that you enjoyed your time without working. I pretty much worked through the weekend, which you know, no big deal. I'm kind of used to it. I have to catch up doing a lot of different things before I leave again on Wednesday for my granddaughter's 16th birthday celebration in Las Vegas. So yay, we're really excited about that. I'm so excited to get on a plane again. <laughs> Not, but it's the price you pay to get to uh, a beautiful place like Las Vegas. And this time of year, it's going to be warm. It's going to be sunny. And I'm excited for that. I'll come back home feeling maybe refreshed again after a cruise to the Caribbean and then a week's worth or so here of working diligently and then another week's vacation. So let's see who we have out here this morning. Good morning, Patricia Woods. Good morning, Debbie tibbetts Tumiel. Good to see you again. She's freshly home from her birthday trip to visit her sister and her brother-in-law and family. Uh, good morning, Michelle Gay. It's good to see you. I'm actually going to see her in person here in a few minutes. She is my house sitter when I'm away. She comes and takes care of my kitty kitty. And good morning, Vanita. Good to see you all this morning. Jacqueline Tyler. Uh, good to see you. She said it was cold there in Salem as well. Yes, I don't know what the heck happened. It was just cold and windy and shivery. Um, however, funny thing, for a Saturday, uh, I was working all day. I had to write, you know, just write. And uh, I ended up that evening getting a call from my uh, granddaughter saying, hey, do you want to go to a play? And it was the play Robin Hood, and it was being done by the high school in Cedro Woolley. Oh, my God, I am so glad I went to that play. It was hysterically funny. The the kids in the, in the play, they did a great job, and it was a musical. <laughs> so... You had the Sheriff of Nottingham breaking into song, and it, it was funny. It was just funny. I was so glad I went. It broke up the, the weekend for me, so adding some humor and something interesting to do. So let's see here. Good morning, Asa. It's good to see you this morning as well. Um, we have an interesting week ahead of us, um, mostly because we have we have sort of this energy shift, let's call it that, that is that we're in the process of. For the most part, April was all about the outer planets from Jupiter to Saturn to Pluto to Uranus and Neptune. They were doing this very uh, interesting dance, right? Not to mention the retrogrades, which of course, Saturn turns retrograde today. We're going to take that up here in just a minute. Um, but we also had uh, some uh, some really powerful inner things going on or the shift to more uh, inner expressions of the growth as expressed through uh, Jupiter and the um, transformational powers, the death rebirth powers of Pluto as it turned retrograde. And now we're going to end up with Saturn in retrograde, adding its form and brand of inner work to the whole of the mix. Now, as we move into this week, we begin to see a shift toward the inner planets taking precedence. Now, the outer planets represent the things that are shifting on the collective. Now, that doesn't mean you get away without changing something on the inside as well, but it sort of is, they, they bracket uh, the things that are going on for us as a collective or as humanity or as earthlings, let's say, and then uh, your own particular part of that shift, right? But when we talk about the personal planets, and with them, we're talking about the sun and the moon, of course, but we talk about those just about every day. Um, but Mercury, Venus, and Mars are also a part of the personal planets. And when they're doing things and acting up and changing, it is something that is happening to us personally. So I hope that there's a distinguishing kind of break there between Mars and Jupiter, where everything 
from Mars inward is all about us as individuals and the actions that we take and our relationships, our values and communication, etc. But when we're talking about the outer planets, it's our role within the bigger, wider picture. So I hope that makes sense for you. So now as we move into the beginning of May, and literally as I looked ahead, because tomorrow, of course, if you are a member of the Living Astrology Academy, you know that tomorrow is the webinar about May, where we're going to take a look at the month ahead and look at what to watch out for, what's happening, etc., both through human design and through a regular astrology. Um and I'm also going to be introducing the white moon Selena to all of you tomorrow. So get your seat, right? Get your seat, get ready to get there. If you haven't joined the, the, the membership yet, there's still time. You can join the membership and be a part of that webinar tomorrow afternoon. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but there's something interesting going on here in the whole month of May that shifts things to us personally. It's not enough now that we have these collective changes that have gone on that we're a part of, but now we personally, each of us as individuals, have to sort of step up to the plate. And the major player, at least this week, and actually well into the month, is the planet Mercury. And Mercury, as you all know, rules the mind and our communication, how we speak to one another, how we think, how we um, react from our thinking, and also from a standpoint of how we say what we say, and literally, what is it that we are going to say? What are we communicating? And this week, then, we have the beginning of that. Tomorrow, we start with uh, Mercury in a sextile to Mars. And Mercury right now, as you know, is in Aries. And Aries is a sign of think first, or wait, act first, think later, right? So Mercury in there is often just speaking, but without really thinking about what it's saying, um, maybe saying things it doesn't mean or saying things from a place of the heart, but then realizing later, oh my gosh, now I'm committed to something I can't keep up with. So there's a lot going on in the personal lives of each one of us as we step over the threshold from April into May. So everybody needs to be aware, be ready. And if you know your own chart, or if you need a copy of your own chart, get one so you can track with me all through the month of May as far as what is going on with you personally. And of course, the signs being hit during this time are mostly going to be Aries, Taurus and Gemini. And so that is the first third, uh, or first fourth, excuse me, of the Zodiac. It is the beginning um, of the of the Zodiac wheel. Those first three signs set the tone for what comes later. So a lot of the energies that'll be taking place here with these uh, inner planets are going to be setting the tone for you in terms of what comes next right? What, how do you play out with your Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter in retrograde? Because now you've got a shift in your personal life in order to accommodate some of those bigger things that are going on. It's kind of an interesting juxtaposition, I think, where we've, you know, we, we're sort of body slamming from one to the other, from the outer world of expression of the uh, collective to the inner world expression of the collective and now to the personal expression of uh, each of you and how you share your gifts and your talents, how you say what you say, how you do what you do. So be prepared, everybody. Uh, anybody else checking in here? Good morning, Colleen. It's good to see you this morning. And anybody who has any questions, any observations, um, please, you know, write them here in the chat. Um, I had another one of those, I, I've actually every night had some very powerful dreams going on. One I shared with you last week, the second one, um, which I think was Thursday night, maybe Friday night. I don't remember. I just know, I remember it was powerful and I thought I should remember this. But once I woke up, it was gone. It was like just so much smoke in the night, right? Um, last night, however, and into this morning, I had choices to make. 
and they were very clear. There were three choices in everything that was going on in my dream. There were three choices and it was almost like you guys, have you noticed I'm not sitting in my bedroom today? I'm out in the kitchen because I seem to work better up here, especially when the sun is out. So I moved up here today. Um, so my background is different. The lighting's a little different, but I, it feels good to me up here. So in this dream, I had these three choices. It was almost laid out like the gene keys are, right? Where there's the shadow, the gift, and the city. And the highest expression of what I was being called to express, and this is the weirdest damn word ever, and it was kingship. And I got this, and I'm getting chills even thinking about this now, because I'm not quite sure what that word means as it relates to me. But that word kept coming to me as I was waking up, kingship. And the the last thing that I had to choose was this sort of purple card, if you will, or banner, if you will. And I was in the process of choosing it, picking it when I woke up. And so I wake up with this purple banner or sheaf of paper. I don't know what it was exactly. And with the word kingship in it. So now, of course, I have to do my own deep dive and see if I can figure out what the symbolism is of that interesting dream. Not that I, I'm not even thinking about um, kingship so much, but I am thinking that it might relate to the masculine energy, you know, the king energy and, you know, maybe having having to do, ha having to bring up the masculine and balance that within me in order to move forward. I don't know, because of course it hasn't quite made its way all the way through, but it is interesting to me that that would be a term that come up, came up for me in a dream because today Saturn, uh, the taskmaster, the king, if you will, turns retrograde and moves us to begin the process of redeveloping our inner landscape. And the inner landscape is so important now, right? Because not only is Saturn turning retrograde, but we've already had Pluto turn retrograde and Jupiter retrograde. So we're transforming on the inner planes. We are growing on the inner planes. And now Saturn changing to retrograde is going to call us to restructure and reformat our world on the inner planes. Now, what does that mean? Well, it might mean adopting more of a spiritual practice if you haven't had one moving through your your day-to-day -day life. It may be that you have more to do in terms of uh, changes that maybe you've been hesitant or in resistance to, to doing. But I do find it interesting that Saturn, if we look at it through human design, we And through the gene keys, of course, my favorite way to look at some of these things, when I can't get to a truth just by saying Saturn at 20 degrees of Capricorn, what does that mean? Right? It doesn't mean much to, I'm, I'm sure if I said Saturn's turning retrograde at 20 degrees of Capricorn, what does that mean? Well, we know what Capricorn means. We kind of know what Saturn means, but what does that degree, what does that point mean? And that's why when I get to a point like that, where I can't quite put a finger on what it is I want to know, I go to human design, or I go to the gene keys, or I'm going to share something else with you guys this morning that I go to as soon as I can find it on this mess of a desk. This is actually my dining room table, which I've been working at all weekend. So of course, it's a mess. I go to my Dane Rudyar, an astrological mandala, the cycle of transformations and its 360 symbolic phases. <coughs> And I do that because in this little book, which is old, um, he goes through every degree of the Zodiac. And I'm not sure if you've ever heard of the Sabian symbols, but that was something that was um, brought to bear in, oh gosh, maybe the 40s, 30s or 40s, where a, 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 a woman sort of in a trance mode brought up every symbol uh, for every degree of the 360 degree zodiac. So today I looked up what was 20 Capricorn and it was about the value of competition in developing group consciousness. And it's, its name is a relay race. Now, 
a relay race. So immediately I think about teamwork, right? As a relay race is a team. Typically there's four people on a team for a relay race. And what happens is they have to support one another. It's the job of the first person to get out there and get as far ahead as they can, hand off the baton to the second person who then takes up the race to the third person. And it is up to the fourth person then to bring it home and close out the race, right? But they are working as a team, even though each person has an important role in the team. And as soon as I saw that particular degree, I'm like, hmm, that's the gene key 44, right? Synarchy, teamwork. Remember ages ago, we talked about the gene key 44. And I think it was because Venus was sitting at that gate for a while, helping us to realign our values around being a team and working together. And isn't it interesting that today Congress gets back to work here in the US and they have a lot on their plates and they're being tasked with getting back to work and having to work as a team to support the goals of this nation, the people of this nation, not just their individual uh, or their uh, district's ideas of what needs to be done. It is the ultimate in teamwork. You have 400 and some people coming together in the, the, the Senate, I mean, in the House of Representatives to do work. And then there's also the 50 in the Senate themselves. So, or the uh, 100 in the Senate. So we have a lot of people getting back to work today, having to be cohesive and work as a team. Now, interestingly enough, when I looked at the human design aspects for the week, we see that Earth is sitting at gate 44. So the biggest challenge of the week for us is about teamwork. It is about being in a competition, perhaps, but working together to get to that point. And competition is part of the ego um, center in human design. Gate 44, however, sits on the spleen. So it has a, a sort of alter ego in its shadow formation um, in fear. And the fear here is that the past is going to repeat itself. So we have this interesting conglomeration of, of energies around competition, around working as a team, and literally Saturn and the South Node now in a conjunction sit at the gate 54. I'm going to show you a human design chart here because I'm pretty sure I printed one up for this morning. Here we go. Here it is. But first I'm going to circle something for you. Maybe I'll do it in black. So it's here's the gate 44. And here's the gate 54. So, <coughs> excuse me. So today what we have, here's the gate 44. Earth is sitting right here on the spleen center that's open. So we're taking this in, right? We're, we're taking this in. We are conditioned to behave in a certain set of ways. In fact, wow, that makes some sense to me now. We are we are sort of predisposed at this point in our evolution to work in a hierarchy as opposed to working in a synarchy. A hierarchy means that there are these levels, right, with the president, the king, the whatever up at the top, dictating down to the lower levels what happens, what you do, how what the rules are, how you behave, right? Um, if you look at a hierarchy, it is an unstable configuration unstable because as we are growing and evolving, the people at the bottom, if they start to grow and evolve and move up, which they are, it challenges the kingship, right? It challenges those people at the top. And it challenges those people up at the top to move away from hierarchy, where I'm better than you are, right? And gets us away from that idea of polarization and duality and moves us to synarchy. And synarchy is the, the, the root word. Well, first of all, the word sin means together, S-Y-N, sin. So we're bringing things together and archy structure. So a together structure, right? A together structure. That is where the earth is bringing us, challenging us to bring us together, right? Now, Saturn, on the other hand, and the South Node are both sitting here at gate 54, 
which is on the root center. This is an impulse center. I hope you guys are tracking with me. If you need to ask questions, please do. Um, Suzanne, oh, Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take those questions up here in just a second. So we have gate 54, Saturn in the South Node. Saturn, your duty, your responsibility, your form, your structure. And the South Node, the past, right? The past, being in the old, uh, bringing your gifts and your talents forward, but having to use them in a new way. And the gate 54 is the gate of ambition, the gate of drive. And as we talked about last week in your mystical journey here on the planet, it represents your hero's quest for enlightenment. So Saturn turning retrograde now says, what do I need to move through on the inner planes in order to be able to become enlightened? What is left for me to do, right? Where do I go from here? And in that, then I'm setting up some key goals or aspirations for being more what I'm going to call divinely guided, right? Divinely guided. So for example, we know that we're physically here on a planet. And when we look at human design charts, we see the head center here, how it's connected over the top, right? The root centers firmly grounded here. There's no overlap. But up here, the head center seems to intimate that you know, we are bringing in, we are drawing in energy from the spiritual planes or from the unseen realms. And as we're bringing in this energy into our bodies from the unseen realm, it is meant for us to become embodied spirits or to recognize that you are an embodied divine being. So and also then a part of this experience over the next few months is about becoming more and more demonstrating, right? Because we're talking Saturn here. You don't just get to know this. This is demonstration. This is walking your talk and talking your walk. So we are embodying and demonstrating enlightenment or at least making the shifts on the inner planes that we need to in order to be able to walk that walk. Okay, hopefully everybody understands what that's all about. Patricia, kingship, king or king. K is a two in numerology. It's the 11th in the alphabet. Number two is about unity, masculine and feminine working as a team. Awesome. Ing, denoting a verbal action and instance of this or its result. Ship equals mind. That's very cool. Asa, thank you for looking that up. Asa, with Beltane coming up and color purple coming aware, awakening of your goddess lioness energy. <laughs> wow. And purple is also a sign of royalty, Suzanne says. Good morning, Debbie Hedden. Good to see you out there this morning. So lots of things in the dreams, right? In, in my dreams. I hope you all are having these kind of dreams too, <coughs> where there's a message, right? It's not just the the superficial kind either. There's something deep going on, moving within each one of us. And it is our opportunity now then to become embodied spirits, to walk that talk. And it doesn't mean literally, you're not necessarily having to change anything because you were already an embodied spirit. It's just now that recognition and that demonstration of that in within you. Now, I pulled a card this morning. I was drawn to the spirit animal oracle. And the question was, what do we need to know about Saturn in retrograde? And the card that I pulled was interesting because it was the number 26. And the number 26 is an eight. Eight is the number of infinity, but it is also the number that's called the God code or the God number. It is also the number of humanity. And it is flamingo spirit. It says, embrace the in-between. And I pulled them right side up. The other thing I find interesting about this is just because I like to look at the symbology. 26, the gate 26 in human design sits appropriately directly across from where the earth is today at gate 44. And it is called the gate of integrity. Well, it's got many names, but I always think of this as the gate of integrity. 
When it joins up with gate 44, it completes the channel of being in your own skin, right? Being you, um, being true to you. So interesting things here. <coughs> so Flamingo Spirit says, embrace the in-between. Balance comes easily to Flamingo Spirit who sees what was and what will be and stands strong in the face of uncertainty. You can be informed by what came before and plan for a future yet to be, but do not resist Flamingo Spirit's call to be fully present in the now where the real magic happens. With one foot in the life you are moving away from and one in the future as you become the one who leads the life of your highest intentions, you must make peace with the fact that you are not fully in either place. Embrace the in-between. The presence of Flamingo Spirit is also a sign that your creativity is arising within you and opportunities are beginning to present themselves. Remain here in the balanced state of mind for there is much to know and learn before going forward with new plans. You can trust this moment and yourself as you take in what you see and become aware of all that you are experiencing. All that you are experiencing in this in-between time. That just think, makes me think about our dream time as the in-between time, right? And what are we experiencing in the dream being uh, a part of that in-between world? So Suzanne, thank you very much. She just posted up angel number eight, and it resonates with the influences and vibrations of authority and personal power, self-confidence, success, good judgment, money, finances, riches, manifesting wealth, and on and on. Very, very good stuff. You know, in a way, Saturn, in, in human design, when we look at the planet Saturn as a part of your whole being, right? Saturn is very much the taskmaster. It is the teacher. It is the, um, you know, the, the, the taskmaster teacher, the one who, not, not those teachers that just sort of give you out assignments, but the one who really drives you, the one who really wants you to learn and hold you to the highest standards of learning. That's Saturn. And in human design, then once you've mastered the Saturn lesson, then you reap your Jupiter rewards. So wherever that is in your personal human design chart is where you have this give and take happening where harsh lessons, perhaps <coughs> when you rise to that challenge, then you reap the Jupiter rewards. And that's kind of going back and forth within us. Right now, I would say that it is about having those ambitions, moving toward enlightenment, leaving the past behind, being in the now and looking forward to what comes next, right? That is kind of the, the task we have at hand. Now, Saturn like Pluto spends about Saturn spends about four months in retrograde, four and a half months, turns back to forward motion, uh, late August, early September. I can't remember exactly the date, but throughout the summer, right throughout the summer, we are learning inner world lessons. So be prepared, right? And, and Saturn will be retrograding backward over the same position it has been uh, already through in your chart. So for some of you, like, um, and I, I'm, it depends on the house, of course, this is happening in the house that it's happening in is where there's a lot of focused energy, right? The South node, Pluto, Capricorn, or uh, Saturn and Capricorn, all three of these, you know, sitting here and now moving backwards. So whatever Capricorn lessons you've been learning, you are now going to take those inward and make the shifts that you need to on the inner planes. So I can speak to, for example, where it is in my own chart, it's in the house of health and the physical body. And of course I've been dealing with health challenges and now it seems like I'm going backwards into what is all that about? What is that bringing me to? Um, if it's in your, let's say it's in your fifth house, the fifth house is house of creativity and joy, love and romance. Maybe you are having to learn something about loving yourself, right? Taking you into the inner planes. So find where it is going on in your own personal chart 
and the house that it's located in, and you will find where those lessons are going on. I'm going to show you something else, for example, in today's chart. This is the chart of just today. And so this may or may not be happening in your own personal chart. I checked my own and it's not quite happening yet. But if you'll notice, here is, remember Jupiter's in Sagittarius. So it's right here. And there's Saturn, there's the South Node, and there's Pluto. In this particular chart, the chart of today, they are all in the same house, right? They are all in the same house. And until Jupiter moves further behind, back, right, back into its earlier degrees of Sagittarius, it may be sitting very close to where the other planets are in your own natal chart, or I mean, in your own transit chart. Um, I did post up yesterday a reading. Um, it's actually been posted since last week uh, for the retrogrades. So we could specifically look at your own chart. I discounted the reading from $129 down to $89. If you go on my website, it is up on the top right corner. It says special offer reading, and you can take me up on that. Probably won't get your reading until next week, however, when I return from Las Vegas. Um, <coughs> but it doesn't matter timing-wise because timing's always perfect. So even if it isn't until next week that you get the reading, it's when you needed to hear that particular information. But if you know your own chart well enough and you know the houses, you can look to that and be able to kind of read into what is happening for you. All right. So today the moon is in Pisces. So we have this feeling of intuition, being able to tap in or we're tuning in to something that is beyond us, right? Beyond the physical. It is a day for creativity and imagination. And we, it is a compassionate energy, a loving energy, a much softer energy. It is almost always, when I look at Pisces on, uh, moon in Pisces on a Monday, I think, oh, do I have to get up? Um, and in fact, it was like that this morning, the alarm went off and I woke up and I'm like, oh no, I really don't want to get out of bed. I just want to lay here. And I did for a little while, uh, but then I had to get up and get ready. So, you know, kind of a, a slower start to the day, a more peaceful start to the day, perhaps. Saturn does not turn retrograde until 4.38 p.m. Pacific time, so 7.38 p.m. East Coast time. And at that point in time, the, you know, whenever a planet turns retrograde, often there are some kind of repercussions that we experience in that outer world. Maybe not as you personally, but something going on in the outer world. Somebody in this case may be getting their comeuppance, um, something being revealed that has been hidden. So it could be an, an interesting couple of days as we're kind of wobbly right now around that idea of Saturn changing uh, direction. Um, as we move through the week, of course, we're looking at down the line on Saturday, we have the new moon in Taurus. It is a manifesting moon right? Take full advantage of this new moon on sun, uh, Saturday, as it is the, the new moon that in Taurus is often the one I think of about uh, super abundance, right? Where we, we can bring in so much. And um, it, is, it is a sign linked to both scarcity and abundance. Scarcity when it's living from fear and abundance when it's living from uh, a place of dreaming and allowing and manifesting. I don't know. I've told this story before where I have a daughter and a granddaughter, both that are Torians. And I've seen them both do this where they, once they put their mind to something that they want, they just don't allow anything to deter them from that. Right. They just don't. And they make it so right? That's Taurus energy. They put their feet in, they dig their heels in, their hooves in, and they hold fast to whatever it is the dream is, or what it is that they're trying to manifest. We too have that power now over the next few days. <coughs> in fact, I would use the time the rest of this week to be looking at your life and determining what it is that you really, really want to manifest. You know, what it is, what is it that if you could, if you could paint the landscape of your life anew, right? 
what would it look like? What would you want now? What would you desire now? What would it feel like? Because now Taurus energy is sensual energy, sensual, your five senses. So sight, taste, touch, sound, and smell. So when you are thinking about what it is that you might want to manifest with this new moon, what intentions it, it is that you want to set for the new moon, the more senses that you get involved, the the quicker the manifestation goes, the more powerful it is in its in, its intention setting. So, you know, what does it taste like? What does it smell like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? Who is with you in this particular manifestation? Who, where are you, right? What does it sound like? So getting all of your senses involved is really important in the coming new moon. Now, the new moon actually occurs at four, well, hold on, let me see what time was it? 3.45 p.m. on Saturday. That's my time. So 6.45 p.m. on Saturday for those of you on the East Coast. I did put the universal time on my blog post, and I want to say it's at 9 or 10 o'clock at night. So you don't want to set those intentions until after you have the new moon's energy. So look at your time zone and determine where it is. But that doesn't stop you from looking at, you know, what is going on in your life right now and what direction you may all want to go in next. So Colleen, good morning. Saturn is retrograde in my natal chart in Pisces. Does this retrograde hit me harder or no? Because sign difference. So good question. Great question, because I would bet, a, a, you know, Saturn is four and a half months in retrograde in any given year. So there's a good chunk of you out there who have Saturn retrograde in your natal chart. So you are already living a life of the re -re's, right? Redoing, restructuring, reformatting. Um, if you have Saturn retrograde in your natal chart, this retrograde period should be fairly easy for you. A Saturn retrograde in Pisces means you are reliving some spiritual things, right? That embodiment of spirit for you is highly, highly evolved and perhaps ignored in other lifetimes Be for whatever reason, right? For whatever reason, maybe you lived a lifetime in the military and, you know, uh, in, in a, a warlike sort of, uh, of way and you couldn't live from those concepts that you really knew, those highly spiritual concepts that are speaking to you. Colleen, specifically because yours is in Pisces, which is a sign of healing and a sign of, of being inspirited. And um, having to live a life outside of that would cause then in this lifetime a, a switch in focus, right? A switch in focus. So this lifetime, then it's all about living embodied spirit. I hope that makes sense for you. So even though Saturn right now is in Capricorn, a sign of practical, pragmatic action, it does not mean that the grounded action for you does not include being inspirited, right? So really bringing in and embodying spirit as you walk the path in the physical world here on planet Earth. I uh, hope that answers your question. Good morning, Londa. Sorry, I'm late. It's okay. We are still here talking about the different things going on this week. And I'm just going back to see if I missed any comments and I did not. Okay, great. So, so for the most part this week, then we are Saturn retrograde today. We are the new moon on Saturday. In between, there are Mercury dynamics that we have to work through. And Mercury dynamics are always interesting to me because as we look at Mercury, um, Mercury from the 28th yesterday, yesterday until uh, the first or until the second, um, is going to be sitting at the gate of shock, is going to be sitting at the gate of awakening. In your human design, it is the gate that is connecting it starts the connection from the ego center here there's 51 right there up to 25 and it brings the heart center into the soul center and this is a, a separation if you will in your human design that occurred long about the renaissance times maybe from coming out of the dark ages into the renaissance period where we really began to individuate as consciousness as consciousness began to really um, experience individualism. 
And of course, that's grown and grown and grown until the point now where we're being asked to wheel it back in, right? Not to lose your individualism, but to blend your energies to become a synarchy, right? To blend, to work as a team, understanding that if I, if you look at any anything, let's just look at this piece of paper. If I got my scissors out, and of course, I'm not sitting at my desk, so I don't have my scissors. But if I were just to cut out, let's just say I cut this throat piece out. Would this hole be the same? No, right? We'd have a big hole in it. So in a group or in a consciousness, uh, a, a community, a tribe, if we cut out the individual, then there isn't the same quality of the whole. So we need the individual and we need the whole, right? If I just took the throat and cut it out and set it over here on its own, it would have real no real meaning right? Because it would have, it would be, have, it would have been separated. Well, and that's what's happened to us. Literally, we've been separated from one another, separated from the whole, separated even from the earth, right? We no longer live in harmony with the earth. I mean, we're beginning that process of coming back to that. So in this particular time period, then, Mercury is delivering us a message that we have to become whole and it has to start in the mind and then it has to be communicated. How it is that we communicate, what we say to one another is as important because if we are speaking separation instead of speaking togetherness or speaking unity, then we aren't, there's no congruency, right? So the mind and the mouth the mind and, and communication have to be congruent. And so for those of you who are working through challenges, maybe with communication, look to the mind. And for those of you who are dealing with challenges with the mind, look to what it is you're saying. They work together, right? So for the next several weeks, we have a lot of mercury energy, almost like it's battering us with, you know, learn this, learn this. And it begins then if we look at human design this week with the gate of shock, the gate of awakening. Um, this is part of the channel of initiation. So shock isn't punitive, although it can sort of feel that way sometimes, but it really isn't meant to be punitive. It's wait, it's, a, it's about awakening you, shaking you up, making you pay attention so that you can be initiated into what becomes universal love, right? When we bring the two together, we, we bring those two centers together, we do so in universal love. So Mercury, very powerful, very potent over the next couple of weeks. So wherever Mercury is in Aries, first in Aries, and then later in the month of May, uh, we'll switch into Taurus. Wherever Aries Taurus is in your chart is where you have a lot going on with the mind and with your communication style. So it's kind of like this. You you Maybe you're struggling with um, body issues. Let's just use that one. Let's say you're struggling with body issues and your mind is trying, you're trying to reframe how you look at your body. And then what do you do in the morning? You go to the mirror and you look in and you go, oh God, I look terrible. You hear yourself saying that. Now you're out of, you're, you're not in congruence anymore. Now you are incongruent. The mind having, you know, one idea of what's going on while the words don't match. So we have to bring our words in and our thoughts in to match, right? Now, the other thing that's going on is Venus. Venus will also bring up some issues over the next several days and several weeks. And Venus is about our values, about our relationships, our heart centers, right? And Venus in this particular instance, she's also right now in Aries. And uh, I'm guessing some of you are probably with Mercury and Venus, both in Aries. I'm sure there have been relationship issues, words said, um, conflict, maybe confrontation, um, but also maybe some new edges to relationships that you are currently in. Don't forget, we also have Eris 
in Aries and she's a disruptor. She likes to just lob out those golden apples and see what happens. Watch everybody scramble and get upset and angry. Well, our words do that as well, right? We can, we just throw out something. And before you know it, we've watched a family fight begin. Chiron also in Aries. So we might be working through issues of independence versus codependence, which should lead us ultimately to interdependence. Can you see themes are sort of developing here for us? Interdependence, teamwork, synarchy, which re requires us to relieve ourselves of hierarchy, of uh, individualism that is so selfish individualism, right? Selfishness. Becoming self-centered is a part of this. Not selfish, but becoming self-centered. So <coughs> lots going on <laughs> and it all turns personal. So how are you going to work through that? Make up your mind now to set some powerful intentions with this new moon so that you are, a, 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 instead of being out of alignment with heart and mind and mouth, come into alignment with heart and mind and mouth. Londa, can you look at my chart with Mercury and Saturn and oops? I'm not sure what the oops is about. Did you have an oops? Um, I have. I'm going to see if I've got you in this program. Londa, if I do, I will bring your chart up because I've open. I've got it open at the moment. If I knew how to spell, it would work better. D-A-M. There you are. Oh my goodness, you are here. So Londa, we're going to look at your, I, I can't put it up on the screen for everybody to see, but it will be a good exercise for us to be able to uh, find a house where something is happening and look at what the deal is here. So Mercury in Aries is in your ninth house, uh, Londa, and Saturn in Capricorn is in your, looks like it's in your sixth house. I, I remember this because you, you, you were born, you know, not too far from when I was born. So a lot of our energies are similar. Um, your charts aligned a little differently than mine. So, <coughs> so Mercury right now, I got to get back to be live. Um, Colleen, makes perfect sense. My name means girl of spirit. Also, my desire to be a Buddhist monk or Catholic nun. Ha, ha, ha. I love it. So, Londa, keep my mouth shut. Well, I'm not sure that you need to keep your mouth shut. But as a projector, you need to make sure that you have the invitation to speak um, or to say what it is that you feel like you need to say. Uh, your words right now are new and challenging maybe to some people, right? If it's family or if it's, you know, other friends and so forth or colleagues that you're working with. So if, if you are speaking challenging words without an invitation, they're going to fall on deaf ears or you're going to get the opposite reaction of what it is that you are trying for. If, however, you get the invitation to be able to say what you need to say and you use words that are uh on the higher moral road let's say the moral not moral well uh, just the higher from a higher perspective right not from the low ego but from the higher self <coughs> then you will get your message through but if people do not want to hear what you have to say you will waste your time your energy and you will become very frustrated or embittered by the fact people don't listen to you, right? Hubby, I oh, gotcha. So the best way is to wait for the invitation, right? Or to say something to the effect of, I need to say something to you. Are you, are you open to listening to me? Are you open to hearing what I have to say? Or ask questions as a way to draw him in. If he doesn't get drawn in and he doesn't want to listen, then don't waste your time. I know that's hard when it's our husbands, right? Or our significant others, um, because we're supposed to be a team and we're supposed to listen to one another. Um, but isn't he also a projector? I cannot remember if he's a projector or a manifesting generator. 
I don't remember now. So in a way, you might be working at cross purposes right now, depending on the setup in his chart. Yeah, he is a projector too. So if both of you are going around not saying what needs to be said or blurping stuff out onto the other without really stopping and agreeing, this is the conversation we need to have. Let's sit down, let's make time, and let's use a talking stick if we have to, right? This is my turn to speak. Now I pass it to you and it's your time to speak. You know, relationships are tricky this way. And like I said, Venus and Mercury both are in Aries right now. There isn't patience here. There isn't a whole lot of, um, uh, of an, everybody wants to be heard, right? And they're putting themselves out there to be heard. But we have to resist doing that in a way that is uh, obnoxious. We have to do it in a way that gets us heard, right? So make time, come together with uh, a time to sit down and chat and work through whatever it is that you need to work through. Londa, let me look at where I think it was your health house. Mm -hmm. Saturn is in your health house. You are very close to a Saturn return, as am I. Yay for us. We have a reprieve for the next four months while Saturn's in retrograde. It's moving away from our Saturn returns, but we're getting ever closer to our Saturn returns. And in that, then, we are being asked to let go of things that are not working for us. In the health house, that may mean cutting out things in your health right? It may be dealing with health issues. It may be dealing with the body in some way. It is in fact a healing time for you. And I know that in your own personal life right now, you have a lot of people that are around you that, you, that need healing, which forces you to almost ignore your own healing path, which you will pay the price for. So make sure you see to yourself first. Remember when we get on an airplane, put your own mask on first then help those around you, right? Because if you can't breathe, you have no energy left over to help anybody else. If you aren't healthy and not right in your own body, you have nothing to give. And that might mean for you, you have to say no to some things <coughs> so that you can focus on what's most important in your body, in your life. Okay. I'm going to get off my soapbox now. <laughs> By the way, I, I just want to remind everybody, we have another broadcast this afternoon at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. East Coast time. What's really fascinating about that is that it will be our, we're, we'll be on air during the time that Saturn changes to retrograde. And it will be our discussion of what is coming up. And it's WESAC, right? WESAC is a celebration a renewal, I kind of get the feeling of, of our, our purpose, of our spiritual path, that what lies ahead for us. And especially you, Colleen, since you want to be a Buddhist monk or a, a nun, this might be a great experience for you. And we have a friend of Londa's named Amea. She is coming on to talk to us about the WESAC celebrations that are going on by the um, Divine University. And I even like the name of that, right? The Divine University, where we can go get schooled in the divine. So tune in today at four o'clock for an interview with Amea. And Londa will be with us live as well to talk about WESAC. Some of you may not even know what it's about. In fact, I just barely have a grip on it. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't even say I have a grip on it. I just barely know what it's about. So I want to know more, right? I want to know more about how to get in alignment spiritually to be able to look ahead and determine where do I want to go consciously. So I feel like that's all caught up in this. So today at 4 p.m. right here, just go to the Living Astrology Facebook page or however it is you connect with me in the morning and you'll be able to connect with us this afternoon from 4 to 5 p.m. West Coast time. And yes, Colleen, there will be a, a replay or it records. <coughs> so that you can listen again later. I'll also load it up to YouTube and uh, put it on blog talk radio uh, so that you can listen to it, you know, as a podcast as well. All right. So any questions? Uh, okay. Will there be a replay? I will be hanging with Paul Stanley of kiss then. 
<laughs> well, that sounds like a fun thing to do. I got to tell you, Colleen, it's hysterical, but my six-year-old grandson and my eight-year-old granddaughter want, got a, uh, got tickets to see Kiss today or, uh, in concert and they went to the concert. I want to say it was February and it was too funny, right? I'm list. I didn't even like kiss when they were big, when I was a kid and here are my grandkids going to a kiss concert. Um, it was, it's just too funny how things go around like that. Uh, okay. So please send healing vibes and strength to Vicki Clark today. Oh my goodness. I just realized Vicki isn't in here. Vicki, we're sending you a lot of love and healing energy. I don't know what's going on, but whatever it is, may it may you be at peace. And Londa is letting us know that the seriouslibrary.com has information on WESAC. I'm going to actually put that up here, the seriouslibrary.com. Hopefully that's showing. There you go. And I think that is it. Oh, it is it for me today, except that one more thing. I drew a card for us for the week, also from the wisdom of the Oracle. And in this one, guess what I was thinking of? I was looking to the new moon. And this is the card that came out. Treasure Island. Card number nine. I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. Treasure Island. So here's what the card says. The law of attraction bringing dreams into fruition. The results of positive thinking made manifest. Abundance appearing as if from nowhere. Financial gains and the sharing of good fortune. You've worked hard and acted upon your unwavering belief in abundance. And suddenly, in the midst of it all, you hit the jackpot. I can't believe that because I'm going to be in Vegas, baby. Right? Jackpot. I'm going to go to Treasure Island. I'm pretty sure there's a hotel called that. You have uncovered the map to buried treasure and tapped the unlimited potential within you. What you must hone now is your ability to recognize when X marks the spot, because some of these golden opportunities may be obvious, but others may not be so readily apparent. Trust your intuition to light your way now as you enter this truly prosperous phase where all the long hard work navigating your inner life is now paying off externally. In all respects, I mean, in all aspects of your life at this time, you have good fortune. Don't forget to enjoy it and share it with others as treasure shared multiplies like magic. Yes. <laughs> I couldn't have picked a better card if I tried. I just love it. Number nine. Nine is the number often of intuition and universal love. Suzanne has put up here for us, eternity, faith, universal spiritual laws, karma, spiritual enlightenment, yay, 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 lots of good stuff here, all right? So we have a lot to look forward to, and looking forward to good stuff, but also knowing we must do our work to get there. Don't shirk your responsibilities, right? And I don't mean become a workhorse, I mean do your own work. Do your processing, whatever's showing up in your world, right? Um, greet the world with love, and it is what you will see reflected back to you. All right, everybody, that is it for me for this morning. I will see you this afternoon at 4 p.m. Pacific right here, uh, where we will be interviewing Amea and Londa around WESAC. So I'm excited for that. All right, guys, take care. Mwah. Have a wonderful day. See you all later.